And you're going to be judged by the amount of grace that was on your life and what you did with it. So I don't personally believe in the rapture. I personally believe that his kingdom coming is the spirit is going to rise up and defeat the soul. There's going to be a battle. The Bible talks about it in Revelation 12. There's a war that's going to go on in the heavens. Because what goes on in here is affecting the atmosphere. And it's going to cause a civil war. And I think that what's going to happen is that it says multitudes are in the valley of decision. Does that mean you can keep sinning until that happens? I wouldn't do that if I were you. It means that today is the day of salvation. And if you don't want to be on your face like the heathen, you better come to God and start getting in his presence so you can carry his glory. Because it is going to be a frightful, frightful thing if you don't really know him. 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, 3, 4 says, The man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. Now, we're taught that that's the abomination and desolation, that's something that's going to happen in Jerusalem and whatever. Maybe, but what is the temple of God? What's the temple? Our heart, our spirit is the temple and so what's happening right now is the devil is sitting down in their temple as God. What I mean by that is in churches, like I said, they see it upside down. The devil is sitting in that temple ruling that church because it's soul-led. That's what's happening. That's the Antichrist. I know that there's a, I believe there's an Antichrist body just like there's a Christ body. But I believe that the enemy is the one that looks good, but he really doesn't have a relationship with God. Because those are the ones that killed Jesus. Give me the Satan worshipers. Give me the hell's angels. Give me the prostitutes and the drug addicts. They're not the ones that put Jesus on the cross. They came running to him. They loved him. It was the ones you sit beside on Sunday morning that put Jesus on the cross, that looks good. But they have no love in their heart. They didn't recognize Jesus when he came. That's the way it looks to me. Eternal life, like I've said over and over again, is coming back into oneness with the Father. Now, really, really pay attention because this is some heavy stuff, these next two slides, and then we'll be done. We are born through man's seed, okay? We're born through man's seed. Everybody on the face of this earth was born through man's seed. Jesus is the only one that was born of a virgin birth, right? Okay. Well, impossible to ever break through the soul because man's seed, we come in this world and we don't even know that there's a father who loves us. So we were supposed to come in this world knowing that, that our Father loved us. But because of that man's seed, it passes on demons from your generations before, the Bible says in Numbers 14. So you don't know that your Father loves you coming in this world. So until you get saved, until you hear the message of Jesus Christ and give your will over to him, it's impossible to ever break through that soul. Your soul will lead you straight to hell. Okay? But when you get saved, you get a new spirit. A new spirit. And that spirit has the ability to break through. Now think of a plant. Think of a seed that goes down like a mustard seed, the Bible calls it. And that seed wants to come forth and break through, but the soul is over it, okay? When you read the word and you get control over your mind, when you start meditating on the word, you start reading it until something strikes you and you say, hmm, now what does that mean? Your father's there to teach you. And you think about it. You go out and you think about it at work. You're thinking about it. And eventually he starts talking to you and giving you wisdom. 
You're, you're learning to think about that type of stuff instead of all the junk that you want to think about. When you get control of your mind, you learn to meditate and you can keep all your thoughts on God. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit. So that's how he connects with us is with that new spirit. He connects with us and he starts talking to you. That's how he talks. He will talk to you. But if you take and you push down his voice and say, I don't want to do what you're telling me to do, then that's where you are. But he will talk to you because he's talking to your spirit when you get saved. All right, the spirit has the ability to break through that soul. Okay? It has the ability. If you keep all your thoughts on God and you keep reaching, like I said, God's going to ca cause you to throw your idols aside. So imagine this little growth taking place. It's a process. And as you keep going up, you keep going up because you're casting idols aside. You're moving, he's, he knows what you need to cast aside. And you're moving everything away so that that can continue to grow. That's the process. Okay, frustration is when you get right here. Imagine, think about a birth, okay? Think about a birth. It's like that baby wants to come out. But that body's like, mm, and it's holding, and it's holding, and it, all of a sudden, bam, then you've got a birth. That's what happens when the spirit breaks through the soul. Because you're reading so much word, you're getting your apostolic, your prophetic, and your evangelistic impartations. Your spirit is getting stronger. You know your daddy's talking to you, and you're not to remain a slave. But if you don't, you remain a slave to the soul. But this is the process. So there, a birth takes place. Well, when, you come, when you come out, when you get about right here, you are harassed by people that are around you, that those spirits, they know what you're doing. They know exactly where you are. They can see what's going on, and they harass you. And some people go, whoop, and they go back down. But some people go, Lord, I love you. I'm scared to death. I'm going to press through. And they press through. Okay? Because you are an enemy. The moment that you get saved, because of the potential that's inside of you to overthrow the soul, you are an enemy of the world. Jesus said it. The world hated me. It's going to hate you too. Because you have his spirit inside of you. We, we Together, you see what I'm saying? Okay, now watch this. There are wheat and there are tares, and they're both growing together. The same process. There are evil seeds that are being sown into people to have power for the devil's kingdom. And there are good seeds that are being sown to have power for God's kingdom, and they're growing together. And at the end time, it's going to be a harvest because you don't go in there, they're growing together. You don't go in there and try to pull out the wheat. Because the tares got sown among. How did the tares get sown there? I'll tell you, because when you have a soul-ruled world, okay, think about this being darkness. What grows in darkness? I'll tell you, in my kitchen what grows in darkness is moths. <laughs> I'm getting my fly swat out. And those are also indictments. God's showing me stuff. There's little, these little things that come in the grocery store, little, little worm or whatever, and they grow in to be a moth. Those things are the hardest things to get out of your pantry. And, but the thing is, is they grow in the darkness. So does the wheat grow in the darkness? No, it does not. So if the soul is ruling, what's growing by default? The tears. And the wheat's just going, you know, I'm just going to lay down and let the wolf eat my belly. This is God's plan. we got to throw this off so that the sun can shine. Because the type and shadow, the sun is the spirit and the moon is the soul. It's not by chance that Islam uses that as their, um, their icon. This, the moon, they use that as their icon. And they worship the moon. But anyway, 
The thing is, is that the 